In a way, if you think about it, cruise ship being the university experience, you could think of these online courses as day excursions. You know, yeah. so like you go take a sea doo out, or you go <laughs> on a jungle cruise. Um, so, so if your university that you're at doesn't have a Tableau class, then go, by all means, go online and acquire those skills. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. In this Tactical Thursday episode, Dr. Hall and I are going to be talking about how to build your hard skills roadmap. So what I mean by this is you need to kind of come up with a strategy or a plan to make sure you're ready when it comes time to interview. And the best way that I would have approached doing this is you should pick your top three skills. So go on LinkedIn, go on Indeed or in monster.com and just find your ideal job. Go down to the skill section, copy all of the skills listed, put them into a Word document and then you bam, you've got your blueprint for how to build the hard skills that you need to get your ideal job. I think that's a great place to start, John. And um, what I would add to is that there's other places that um, other people might not look at that can give you kind of an edge. Maybe you'll see a hard skill for a particular position that is overlooked by other people applying for the same job, or you might get a different perspective on developing that hard skill. So one place I like to refer my students to is the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook. And so what that uh, website does is it introduces you to a variety of positions. It talks about the median salary, it also talks about job growth um, for that over time, and so analytics jobs are on the upwards path, of course. And it also talks about what kinds of skills that you need, education skills and, and things like that. The other thing I would say to do is to not just look at what is readily available on the internet, actually talk to someone who has that position or a similar position to that and do an informational interview. Not only can that informational interview give you the hard skills that you need to acquire, but it also could be a networking opportunity. I think the informational interview is a great idea. It totally slipped my mind. I'm glad you came on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also have an anecdote that I want to share from one of our previous podcast guests. So Tina has actually gotten a job at one of the big fan companies. So either Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, or Google. Mm -hmm. And she has this whole story. So go check out that podcast episode if you're interested. So she switched her from her internship. I think she was kind of going the management consulting route into the data science route. And she kind of switched on a dime. Mm. And what she did was she went to Glassdoor, mm -hmm. looked up the company where she was applying for her entry-level data science job, and then found how they are going to be asking those questions and then also what the questions are going to be about in terms of a hard skill. Yeah. So, yeah, so not, not every company is going to be as big as those big tech companies. Mm -hmm. So you may not have the option to go to Glassdoor and get, I mean, there there are posts and posts and posts about that specific data science interview. Yeah. So if you're looking for a medium or a small size company, you won't have that option, but if you want to go with, you know, you also mentioned Microsoft is kind of like the sleeping giant that mm -hmm. people aren't as stoked about going and working at. Yeah, they, they forget about big Microsoft when they're trying to get those fang jobs. So Right. So if you're applying for those those bigger, more well known companies, Glassdoor is a fantastic resource as well. You know, it's really cool what Tina did to reverse engineer um, the job and her mm -hmm. acquisition of the hard skills that she needed. She went she went straight all the way to the source of actual questions there. Now, if you're wanting to interview for a smaller company, guess what? They're probably also going to the same company to look for those types of interview questions because, you know, mm. a lot of smaller companies, medium-sized companies, they're very early in their analytics journey themselves as well. And so they don't even know exactly what to ask. And when they ask you those questions, they might not exactly know what they're asking you. <laughs> and so you just need to know enough um, about that hard skill in order to be able to answer the types of questions that you might also see um, for those big tech companies. Awesome. So next, let's kind of move into how would you advise people building hard skills? So I feel like we are 
beating the the Tina story to death, but she taught herself SQL within 11 days for free using a, a various different online resources. Mm-hmm. So as a college professor, what do you think the pros and the cons versus learning in a classroom versus kind of these more online open source learning options? Well, if you need to do a crash course, uh, there's no more efficient delivery method than an online course like um, a Udemy course or a Udacity course or data camp course, something you can, mm-hmm. or LinkedIn learning, something you can get for free or maybe at a relatively low cost that you can, you can knock out in 10 days, okay? But there's also an advantage to taking a long form traditional classroom where you really get to take a deeper dive into the why mm-hmm. behind the how. Uh, because a lot of the online courses, none of your courses, of course. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yes, uh, can be very cookbook oriented, you know, and it takes you very linear, linearly from A to B. But what happens when C jumps in? Yeah. And guess what? They're going to throw a C at you during that interview. (laughs) So you really need to have some flexibility, you know, in, in, in the ways in which you acquire these hard skills. So not only taking a class where the case studies have been handpicked for you and you're using the clean data, you need to work with some dirty data. You need to do your own project. You need to solve your own problems. And that is when you truly take ownership of those hard skills. And that's when you have a story. I mean, like, how long can you talk about the Udemy course that you took during an interview? Right. But you can talk about your project and how you solved a personal problem. And that's going to take you through that interview. And so you don't have those awkward silences and you don't have to have the the interviewer say, like, that was fast, you know, so. Exactly. So to kind of piggyback off that, I see universities and colleges as kind of like they're the freight liners. They're, you know, very sturdy, very solid, but I don't know. I've never driven a Freightliner, but trying to turn a Freightliner is really hard to do. But these online courses are like little speedboats that can zip around the ocean. So I think a really good approach to building hard skills is combining kind of these well-established Freightline in-person courses Mm -hmm. with these little zippy online courses that are very much up to date. So for example, I built the Power BI certification course before that course was even published. So I, I was adapting to the market at a very, very quick pace. You know, Greensboro College or High Point University mm-hmm. cannot quite adapt that quickly. Mm-hmm. But that being said, they've cultivated this whole learning environment, which I think is extremely valuable. So the term Freightliner for university classes sounds a little too boring for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a cruise ship. Okay. okay, because colleges are developing a lot more amenities and people don't just go to college um, to learn skills. They, they come to, to meet people, to have fun, to discover themselves. Right. And so it's not an either or situation. I think that, that online courses as well as traditional university courses are complements. You kind of need to do both. In a way, if you think about the cruise ship being the university experience, you could think of these online courses as day excursions. You know, yeah. so like you go take a sea do out, or you go <laughs> on a jungle cruise. Um, so, so if your university that you're at doesn't have a Tableau class, then go, by all means go online and acquire those skills. Um, if your cl- if your university does have a Tableau class, take that course, and then go take Python online. Uh, okay. You know, so really you need to take responsibility for your ongoing education. Um, because if you don't, you know, all, all you're going to be doing is you're just going to be stuck in that cruise ship mindset. Right. You know, and you're going to miss opportunities. Well, I think that we have quite vividly laid out your hard skill voyage. Get on the cruise ship, yeah. maybe take some day excursions. But yeah, I feel like um, hard skills are increasingly easier to come across. Yep. So they're not as much as a competitive advantage as they once were. But that being said, it's easier than ever to make sure that you're up to date. Thanks for tuning in, and I really appreciate Dr. Hall coming on. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. (laughs) Make sure that you guys subscribe and ring the bell if you want notifications on our upcoming videos. See you guys in the upcoming episodes.